Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. As for today, we have a remake of a video that I made in 2021. Yeah. As I was remaking this video and watching the previous one to take some notes and see what I could improve uh, upon the previous video and the previous version, let's call it that. Well, all I could think of was, my goodness, it was so, so cringe. Just listen to a bit of it. But if you feel already lost when seeing this much data and you want something simpler, you can simply download MSI Afterburner that comes with RTSS. As you saw, the way I speak, the fluidity of my, of my speaking just improved a lot. And thank God it did because, well, it's three years, almost three years from the, from the time that I, released, that I released that video. So, great. But for today, we have the remake once again of that same video, basically bringing new information, uh, bringing better information, better display than so on, so on, so on for people coming to the channel recently that didn't have a chance to watch that video. And of course, people that are actually watching to fix their issues with high temperatures on their computers, but they don't really want to see a video from 2021 because they might think that it is not up to date. So I'm doing an updated version. Also, this applies to laptops and desktops, but mostly to desktops. Some of these tips you can use them on your on your mobile or on your mobile processors, but most of them are aimed at computers, gaming computers, personal desktop gaming computers. And with such personal computers, I believe you would like to sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mo, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. As PC gamers, we all had an overheating computer at some point in life, and that's prone to happen mostly to people just entering the PC world. Brent Rambo. But rejoice, my friends, because in this video, I'll show you the possible causes of an overheating system and ways to fix them. High temperatures are most commonly perceived by the user when a lot of noise is being produced, usually high RPM fan noises, or, of course, when your computer starts performing like shit. And you first want to know exactly what parts slash parts of your computer are overheating. The usual ones are the CPU, your processor, or the GPU, your graphics card. But having things like a really bad computer case can cause bad case airflow that can lead to an overheating system and throttling, like for example from your disks, especially the NVMe ones. But we'll get there. Now, how do you know which parts are the problem? I advise you to download and install a software called WH Info 64, which in my opinion is one of the best software tools you can get in terms of overall monitoring. You have almost everything there, from CPU and GPU to motherboard and disks, and each one of those have lots of data associated, which is quite awesome. But in case you feel already lost when seeing this much data and you want something simpler, you can download MS Afterburner that comes with RTSS, Rivet Tunner Statistics Server, and simply activate it and run a game so you can monitor your CPU and GPU temperatures in real time. And MS Afterburner is really easy to configure, but if you have problems with it, you have several tutorials online that will easily help you. But even though MS Afterburner will show you your CPU and GPU temperatures by default, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of CPU temperatures, I would say that in a gaming situation, anything past the 65 degrees should be taken in consideration. Even more, if your cooler is making a lot of noise to maintain those same 65 degrees. As for the GPU temperatures, the core temperatures can be as high as 75 degrees without a single problem. And you should only start worrying a bit when temperatures stay around the 80 degrees mark for a long period of time. And also, you now have the Ryzen 7000 series with their X models jumping up to 95 degrees, but don't worry because AMD stated that those CPUs are ready to work 24-7 at 95 degrees as they will always adjust voltages and frequencies depending on the temperature. And in a matter of fact, tests have been done and those CPUs don't throttle for a single second, even at 95 degrees. So just to conclude, these same CPUs don't stay at 95 degrees all the time when gaming, they will just push these numbers when doing heavy multi-threading works, especially if your cooling solution is poor, so 95 degrees all the time is still not normal. Now, if it is your CPU, 
what can you do? The simple and most effective way for systems that never have any kind of maintenance is to open your side panel and clean your CPU cooler. And you can usually do that with a cloth or compressed air. After that, remove it, check if the plastic protection was taken off before installing the cooler and remove your old thermal paste. For that, you can use some paper tissues and some isopropyl alcohol if you're having problems cleaning it. After that, just apply your new thermal paste and mount the cooler again. If you want a cheap and decent option here, well, the Arctic MX4 would be it. The second option that does not invalidate the first one is to undervolt your CPU. If we're talking about the same CPU architecture, more voltage means more power draw. And more power draw means more heat output. So in order to reduce both of them, you can lower your CPU's core voltage to a certain extent. And this won't reduce your performance, but it may cause instability, like blue screens and immediate shutdowns, if you lower the voltage too much. As for lowering the voltage, well, you should know the basics of how BIOS and UFI work. If you don't, well, just ask a friend who does, or watch some tutorials online, of course. And the third option is the one where you need to spend some money, but is actually the simpler and most effective one, which is getting a new CPU cooler. Usually, anything around $40, like the Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin, will do the job for most mainstream CPUs since it has an outstanding price performance ratio. And in case you're using an AIO water cooler, I do advise you to check if you have it well positioned and if the fans are in the right place. You can watch Gamers Nexus video for that. And in case you detect that the problem is the GPU, you can do exactly the same things as before. If you have your GPU for more than two years, maybe you should consider removing and reapplying the thermal paste. This process is a bit harder to do than on the CPU, since you have to deal with more screws and, of course, it will void the warranty given by most brands. But it can be done and usually works. You can also undervolt your GPU, which is actually easier than CPU undervolting. Like you can see, for example, in some of my undervolting tutorials for the AMD and NVIDIA cards that I own. A new GPU cooler is also an option, but in most cases, due to pricing, it is a no-go for most people. And this is why, when building a computer, if you're not into a really tight budget, you should always look to get a decent aftermarket cooler for your CPU, and you should also look into getting a version of the card you want with a decent cooling solution. Try avoiding those extra cheap models, because you'll most likely regret it. Believe me, I've been there. But even with this all done and taking away the ambient temperatures variable, they are still a factor that comes to play an important role when talking about the overall computer temperatures. K's airflow. Most people neglect the importance of K's airflow, and even more nowadays where people tend to pick a case not due to its features and cooling ability, for example, but instead due to its style. Oh! And don't get me wrong, because I am a fan of stylish computers, but not when in terms of importance, style overcomes performance. Now this happens mostly with tempered glass cases you see nowadays, mostly the ones with the front glass panel. Usually cheaper cases with front glass panel have a very small space in between the fans and the glass. And since the glass has no holes to let the air move properly, like the mesh panels for example, it doesn't matter if you have 2, 3 or 100 fans in the front of your case, because if there's not enough space in there, what your fans will be doing is moving the heated up air inside your case, because of course there's not enough space for the fans to pull the fresh air in. One simple way to see if your front panel airflow is choked is to put your hand in front of the fans and see if you can feel the air flowing in almost every position. If not, then remove your front panel and try again. If the difference in terms of airflow is easily felt and your overall temperatures come down a lot, then you know you have a problem there. And believe me, a good case airflow makes a huge difference in terms of temperatures. Still inside the case airflow, we have common questions like how many fans? Positive or negative airflow? As for the how many fans, I think that if you have a mid or top tower, 5 120 or 140 mm fans will be more than enough, being usually 3 in the front, pulling the fresh air in, and 2 on the top and rear, pushing the hot air outside, also creating a positive airflow. As for the airflow, yeah, I do prefer the positive one since in my experience it is the best one when well balanced. You have almost no dust inside the case after months of usage and the temperatures are pretty good, so it's a win-win for me. 
Also, as for a final tip, if your temperatures are finally good and you want to reduce your computer's noise level, I advise you to go into BIOS and reducing your case fan speed to a fixed 1000 RPM or lower. This because it is usually above the 1000 RPM where most fans start getting noisy and sometimes with no absolute changes to the overall temperature. So, if you can have a quieter computer with the same overall temperatures, why not? Let's now move to the conclusion. And well, guys, as you saw, there are lots of things that people tend to look over and they don't actually think those things might do a difference, but they do. And sometimes they do a massive one. For example, the case airflow is one of the most important things that we have nowadays and people just neglect it, neglect <laughs> and people just neglect it lots and lots of times and a good case airflow will improve your GPU temperatures, will improve your CPU temperatures, will avoid having for example lots of dust inside the case, will avoid lots of things. It might even postpone the date where you need to change your thermal paste because since the temperatures are quite better the thermal paste will, will not dry as fast. So it's a win-win situation, get a good case with good airflow and possibly mesh because having a mesh front panel is kind of a must nowadays and I, I'm actually glad that the industry moved moved towards that way instead of going to the fancy um, to the fancy glass tempered glass front panels and I, I I'm telling you my main case has a glass front panel but it was well made the case was expensive and it was well made the space required for proper airflow was there the airflow is there so things work well but when we're talking about let's say low to mid tier cases those who have front glass panels them most of them work really really poorly you could have like 100 fans there and it would still not be enough and it will mess up your computer entirely in terms of temperatures while mesh even if the mesh is not that great even if the design is not that great in terms of airflow it will always be better than the the ones with tempered glass because it is mesh you have holes the air passes through the holes and goes inside your build the the cool air so that's what you want to see because you don't want to mess with um with the other guys, the cool, the, the cool guys, yeah. And well guys, hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching, don't forget, if you have any kind of doubts, leave your doubts in the comment section, as always, I will answer as fast as I can, and thank you very much for watching, and if you watch the 2021 version, thank you very much for watching the, that version, and thank you very much for watching the 2023 version. You guys are the reason I can keep this channel, I love to do content, and I love that you guys watch my videos, it makes me feel good. Thank you very much once again and see you in the next video. Cheers.